Welcome back to the channel. We are in Chantilly, Virginia at the National Air and Space Museum, and it is located in a huge hangar. There are hundreds of aircrafts here. They range in all shapes and sizes, and even if you're not an aircraft lover, you'll find this museum extremely interesting, and I'm gonna take you for a full tour of the entire facility, point out all the things that you absolutely should not miss. Now, the best thing about this museum is that it is absolutely 100% free. However, in order to park here, you have to pay $15 and there is no option. There is a brief security screening and food is not allowed in the museum. Now, as you can see, this museum is wide open. There is no particular path as far as where you should go and how you should explore it. However, there are two exhibits that you absolutely should not miss. Those of you who are not new to my channel know that I specialize in fun and interesting things for individuals and family to do while in the DC metro area. And visiting this museum is one of the best ways you can spend your time. Now, if you're interested in other ideas, please check out my channel. The first must-see exhibit is the space section. And this is one of the few facilities in the entire world where you can actually see a space shuttle up close. Now the Space Shuttle Discovery is only one of many aircrafts that are literally history breaking. When you look at Discovery, you are so close. You are literally right there. You can actually see individual tiles. You can almost at some points reach out and touch it. I don't advise you touch it, but you feel like you're literally right there. The, the barrier that keeps you away is literally just a few feet away from the aircraft. As many of you already know, this is one of two air and space museums. The first one is in Washington, D.C., and I highlight that on my channel as well. And of the hundreds of comments that are made on that video, you know, one of the things that's surprising to many of the people who come to the museum is how interesting it, was, it is. But they never felt that it would be interesting before actually going to the museum. And part of the reason is that the museum goes out of, out of its way to really make the exhibits interesting for kids and adults of all ages. You'll see that your placards right next to each item and it tells you exactly what role that item had in making history because all the things you're looking at are really historic. Now, as you can see, it's not just airplanes and space items that are in this museum. Essentially, if it flies or if it can get off the ground, you're going to see it in this museum if it has some historic reference. This museum is 100% wheelchair accessible and the reason why I say that is because uh, a lot of the folks that come and visit this museum are members of the era of World War II. So they're, real, they're elderly and they have a hard time with mobility but as you can see this doesn't take from that at all. There are chairs so if you need an opportunity to sit down and relax you can do so. Uh, all the pavements are absolutely 100% flat and your wheelchair accessible and friendly. All of the Smithsonian museums try to do a good job of helping visitors understand the importance of the artifacts that you're looking at, but none does it better than this museum, and that's because they have a host of volunteers. These volunteers are retired. They either flew the plane, designed them, or helped build them, and they tell you everything that you need to know about the plane. Now, what we're going to hear is from a volunteer who's going to help explain the importance of the um, this airplane right now, which is one of the big attractions, and it's one of the few planes that have ever dropped an atomic bomb. Uh, armor plating. Usually they have armor plating in behind the aluminum that protects the crew. They had to get drag and weight off of this plane. Sorry. No, they able to do the escape. No, normal bomb bomber, they drop the bombs and they quite often linger and, and, and photograph how, how accurate was it. Uh, the atomic bomb wanted to be as far away as possible. So they had, uh, they had uh, 
Trump uh, made this statement in Missouri and released the bomb and immediately did almost a U turn, went 155 degrees, and actually uh, dove to get speed to get away. Get out of there. Here's another volunteer talking about a relatively unknown aircraft. That is, it has materials that are used in it and construction mechanisms that uh, give it extremely low radar signature. And they'll take the time to pull out their books and they'll show you diagrams and make it interesting for kids. And as you can see, this whole entire family is engaged. But it's not just limited to this. There are virtual people too as well. Individuals who are so important that they can't make it. But however, you can talk to them virtually. Here's what that looks like. They always wanted to be very, very fast so they could sneak up on someone from behind, catch them and fire at them. And now the whole, the whole, whole deal is see them at long range with a big, big radar and fire a missile at them so you don't have to follow them and, and shoot them from behind. I highlight all of the Smithsonian museums on my channel. And of all the museums I've ever been to, if you have kids, the kids are more engaged in this museum than any other. If you walk by any of the information on podiums, you will see kids there reading. And that's because these aircrafts are the things that make up their video games. So they're very interested in learning about it. And I think it's a great learning opportunity. So if you have kids, this is a absolutely big home run for you. Now, you may recall I said earlier that there are thousands upon thousands of uh, artifacts that this museum has that they just cannot display. They're stored somewhere in the world. And one of the things I like about this museum, it kind of gives you a look behind the veil. This right here is actually within the museum, and you can actually see how they prepare the artifacts for display. <laughs> Now, the museum does have a store along with a cafe. You can bring your own food and eat it here because I, you know, the food here is pretty standard food, but you're gonna be paying a lot of money for a meal. Prepare to pay around 20, 25 dollars for a meal. But the big thing here is the store. Normally, I never really highlight the store, but this store has, of course, it's the Air and Space Museum, so it has a lot of interesting things uh, that are, you know, aircraft specific. So you're going to find things that you're not going to find in a typical gift shop. Now, also, there is these uh, machines that have these thrill rides for the kids. The kids are going to love that. And once you leave the museum and you walk straight out, there's also this garden, and this garden is absolutely beautiful. So I recommend you leave time in your day for walking around and exploring the grounds of the museum. <laughs>